All right, this is second grade, module seven, lesson five. And in this lesson, students are going to be uh, making some more bar graphs. Uh, this time they're going to be in the, in the concept development. Students are gonna be doing a couple of activities where they answer some questions based on some already given data and stuff. And then activity three, the third one is uh, students will get to design their entire survey and collect their data and make their bar graph in, in its entirety. Uh, the homework, which is what I'm going to be doing the video on, is really just more of the same from the previous lessons, which is having students practice creating those bar graphs and then answering questions. So let's get started. So here are the activities that I was talking about. And the idea is this first activity, uh, students have been given the data. Now they're going to be making, in this case, a vertical um, bar graph. And then right here, you've got another piece of data, collection of data, this time about nickels. Now they're creating a horizontal bar graph. And then the last one, which I think might be most appealing to some of your students, which is the task, the students will be asked to design their survey, um, collect their data, make their table, just do the whole thing. And really, there's some value in just doing this one activity rather than the other previous two. So consider that, parents and teachers, really um, allowing the mathematics to become meaningful for the students because they get to design the survey and collect the data themselves. So just food for thought and consider that one. But here, uh, for the homework, we're going to be continuing to practice making our bar graphs given the data that we uh, have been provided. So in this case, we have number of nickels and we've got four kids uh, who have uh, a certain number of nickels. So what I've done earlier, and I kind of designed it already, is here's our values, our filled-in uh, labels for our bar graph. We've got the title, which is almost always the same title as the title of the data itself. We've got our four categories. In this case, it's Justin, Melissa, Megan, and Douglas. And then down here, we have our numbers, our labels. And parents and teachers, I've said it before in previous videos, it's important that the students understand that the numbers go with the line, not with the gaps, not with the spaces, because we really want the students to be able to relate this collection of numbers with a line, a number line. And in a number line, the numbers go with the the lines, the interval markers, rather than the spaces in between. All right, so now just being able to graph, pretty straightforward. We have Justin with 13 nickels. So Justin's bar graph is going to go all the way that long right there. So there is Justin's bar graph. And we know because it lines up perfectly with the 13. Melissa has 9 so Melissa is going to go right there, and we know it's right because we lined it up with the 9. And of course, another way to do it, verify, is to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there we go. We got 9. Now we have Megan. Megan has 12 nickels. And so Megan is going to go right there. And then, lastly, Douglas with seven nickels. Maybe it's because he already spent some of his nickels. And then, of course, it's nice to color shade it in. We don't have to if we don't want to, but I will. So there is our bar graphs right here. I decided to do it in green since we're kind of talking money here, so... Uh, we do it in green. And then, of course, we could answer all the questions. So parents and teachers, the key with the answering the questions about this bar graph isn't so much is the, are the students getting the right answers. The real value is talking about how did they get the answer? Did they get the answer through addition or through subtraction? Because a lot of the questions can be you can um, either technique, addition or subtraction could be used to get that correct answer. And once again, we've got our data. This time it's dimes donated. And we have our empty uh, bar graph. In this case, it's a vertical one. 
Now I'm going to bring in the information that I've already kind of pre-filled in. So we've got dimes donated, which is generally the same as the table. And then our, we've got our four categories. In this case, it's Kylie, Tom, John, and Shannon. Uh, and now we're going to graph. And now you see the numbers have already been given for us over here on the lines. And that's exactly the way we want it. And so for Kylie, she has 12. So her bar graph is right here. And it's lined up perfectly with the 12. Tom is 10. So his is right here. And again, it's perfectly lined up with that 10. John is 15, so he's, oh, he's way at the top. John with 15, and then Shannon with 13, right here. And then, of course, it's nice to color it in. I'll do red this time. And so there we go. There's our bar graph. Now, some of the things that you could talk about is, well, how, you know, if we know that John was 15 and Shannon is 13. That means she's going to be two less. So we could start there. We didn't have to look all the way over here at the 13. We just know that Sean, I mean, John is 15. Shannon is two less, 13. So we just start two lower. Boom, doom, right there. So there's a lot of ways that we can talk about how we fill this in, how we can be efficient without always having to count all of the spaces. And then, of course, once it's filled in, you can answer your questions. And that wraps up, let's see, second grade, module seven, lesson five, where students are solving word problems based on the bar graph that they've created with the data they have been given.